Hello and let's talk about the COVID-19 situation in Delhi. The capital has emerged as one of the epicenters of the disease in the country with the number of cases reported on Monday evening standing at 1,647. Now, this is an improvement over the past few days when the number of daily cases had crossed 2,000. The total number of cases is close to 43,000 while the number of deaths is at 1,400. The numbers are only one part of the problem. State health facilities do not seem to be inspiring a lot of confidence in the people. Many have resorted to private hospitals which are charging a bomb. There is also the problem of testing. Testing rates came down dramatically earlier this month, although the situation seems to be improving now. We talked to NewsClick's Prabir Purka Esta on some of these issues in Delhi. Thank you, Prabir, so much for joining us. So, yesterday we did see that the numbers reported by Delhi, there has been a bit of a decrease. Although, over the, in the days preceding that, they were almost the highest number being reported for a consistent number of days. And there's been a lot of uh, questions raised about how the Delhi government and for that matter, the central government are handling the issue. There's been the question of poor hospital facilities. There's been a question of a general lack of clarity in terms of strategy in dealing with the issue in the capital city. So could you first talk about what you see as some of the issues that, uh, that are being faced by Delhi's people? You know, the first thing that I think we should register is that the lockdown was uh, a complete failure in the sense that it has not stopped the growth of the infections. And what we have seen in other places with such a draconian lockdown that we had, we should have seen the numbers at least flattening significantly. Now, all that we have seen is numbers not rising as fast as it is projected in some models. But we haven't really seen a slowing down of the growth. Now in Maharashtra, we find a little bit of slowing down of the growth. Mm -hmm. Their doubling rate is now about 20 days instead of 14 days. But we have 14 days of doubling rate in Gujarat, in Delhi, in uh, Tamil Nadu, more in, in fact in Tamil Nadu and uh, Delhi than in Gujarat. Gujarat is probably flattening a little. So what we are seeing is the growth of numbers has been very significant. And that's because, as all the people have already pointed out, that it was a botched lockdown that was done. It did not address the fundamental issues that were needed to be handled in terms of really keeping the people in the places where they were. We had huge problems because people felt they had to go back home. They were without food over here, food or any other sustenance over here. And that, of course, did break down the lockdown. Now, coming back to the issue, what the lockdown should otherwise have done, it should have at least have strengthened the health system. Now, if you look at the health system numbers, in terms of beds and so on, Delhi, it appears there are still beds available, vacant beds available. The Delhi government act shows vacant beds are available. But they're primarily available in two hospitals where people don't want to go. It's Loknaik, Jayaprakash Hospital, LNJP Hospital, which used to be a good hospital once, once upon a time. So I really don't know what the issues there are. And of course, the Guru Tegh Bahadur Hospital, not a particularly, uh, shall we say, hospital known for its efficiency, but that also seems to be mostly empty. The beds are lying empty. So it does seem that the Delhi government did not address the issue of how to strengthen the hospitals in times of COVID. People went there, they had to wait for three, four hours for the tests. Quite often they had to go back, come back the next day or look for other hospitals. And you cannot imagine a person with an uh, oxygen cylinder waiting for three to four hours outside the hospital. These are not scenes that should be seen in front of any hospital. And this was the scenes in front of some of these hospitals. So a complete failure of the Delhi government in addressing the hospital system itself in terms of what needed to be done, the smooth flow of people coming to the hospital, those who are uh, the suspected COVID patients, meaning they are showing clear symptoms, to be segregated, tested very quickly, admitted very quickly, others separated, tested for those who have come for other purposes, separated, and those who have basically come for contact purposes. They have, they have been in contact with somebody, they want to get a test done, separate them. So all these are seems to be elementary measures which a hospital should take. But from what I gather from the reports that NewsClick has, this is not what is happening. So, in fact, people had to go from counter to counter. And if you were not infected, if you had come for a test, you're likely to go back infected and contribute to the problem instead of solving the problem. This is the, in a very small way, this is what seems to be happening. 
The Delhi government did something even worse. They reduced the number of tests, and we have discussed this earlier, yeah. that the number of tests which were there, say, in the month of May per week, the, per, when you come to June, you suddenly found, find that though the numbers of people infected are double, doubling or tripling from May to June, you find that the tests have actually decreased per week. So it seems that they wanted either to artificially show lower numbers or they actually did not have the tests. And I don't know why. Is it the central government failure, Delhi government failure? These are things being completely kept opaque at the moment. And therefore, we have an issue that we know the tests are less, but we don't know why. And no explanation has come from either of the two sides. And then you have the number of infected per test really going up. You see, the two critical issues are at this stage what the Kerala health minister said. It's not a question of only testing. You have to test, you have to track, you have to isolate, you have to treat. These are the basic minimum things that you have to do. Therefore, you need to strengthen the hospital system to be able to do it. And you need a system on the ground, which is of volunteers and the government officials working together to see that you can test, track, isolate, and treat. So this is the things that need to happen. But instead of that, we seem to have been satisfied with a few apps and having press conferences every day. And now, of course, we have the Delhi government in the docks. The Supreme Court has passed strong remarks on its handling of the uh, issue. And then it has got a, a very simple statement saying, we are going to open up testing to whoever it wants. The question is not that. As a government, are you making the tests available to the people? Are you making the test available at a price that people can pay? So this is a part of the larger public health system. If your hospitals are not able to handle the epidemic, have you put a cap on the private hospitals? Will you take over some of the private hospitals? There's no point in taking over small hospitals. You need big hospitals to be able to treat it. Now, I also find that they've declared Bara Hindu Rao, which is a uh, MCD hospital, to be also a COVID hospital. Will you see that their conditions are better than what we know them to be, so that actually people can go there, so that actually makes difference. So the whole issue is really handling the health dimension of the epidemic, and B, to be able to track the people, identify quickly, separate them, and then treat them. And I must end with the final word. So Delhi is not just the city. There is Gurgaon, there is Noida. They are really parts of Delhi. The urban continuum is very much there. And if you see Gurgaon, the test numbers seem to be quite poor. In fact, I'm told that the test numbers indicate now that 50% of those tested are positive which means the tests are really, really way down. And that's how Gurgaon is keeping its so-called numbers low. I don't know about Noida. There are a lot of containment zones which have seemed to have come up there, but I do not know how aggressively they're being test tested and what the health facilities there are, because as I said, it's really the greater Delhi area that we're talking about, which also includes Faridabad, Gurgaon, as well as Noida, which as you know, is in UP. So all of these have to be taken together when we talk about uh, Delhi. And I'm afraid that we are looking at a scenario where even if government does not impose a lockdown, people voluntarily are starting now to create social distancing, traveling much less. The fear is palpable in Delhi. You can see it writ on their faces. You see even people who are driving inside cars also wearing masks, something which you would not have seen even during the lockdown then people some people could travel so you are seeing a turn decidedly for the worst you are seeing a scenario that the government machinery needs to be far more proactive than it is now and you need really the government to now look at the health system which in a week or two weeks is going to reach a situation where there will be no beds available even in the hospitals which people do not want to go into at the moment. So I think we are looking, looking at a very grim scenario. And it's only now they are talking of adding temporary hospitals, something which should have been done four months back. Absolutely. Thank you so much for being talking to us. In our next segment, we talked to Leslie Xavier on mental health and sports. Over the past few days, you've seen a number of conversations on the topic of mental health. And the field of sports is key, both due to the pressure sportspersons face and the image that is projected of them in the popular media. 
here is what Leslie had to say. Leslie, thank you so much for joining us. So we've had in the past couple of days a lot of conversation about mental health in various fields and there's been some conversations in the field of sport also. And like you were mentioning, so while we were talking sometime earlier, sport and mental health have a very complicated relationship also because uh, like you said, a sports person in some senses is also seen as a paragon of good mental health. And a lot of, uh, he's the, they, they held up as role models of certain values, which are, of, you know, of strength, of willpower, of confidence. And these are the narratives that are continuously spread. But in actuality, we understand that the situation is much, much more complex. So could you first start off by talking a bit about that aspect, that how the picture that is presented often in media narratives is not that simple. So it's uh, it starts the fault starts from there. So uh, I mean, if you look at uh, the biggest sports person in in India at the moment, Virat Kohli, the Indian cricket team captain, uh, he has been. I mean, he portrays himself as this alpha male. So everything is perfect: strength, aggression. Uh, mentally tough, a tough competitor, a fighter. I will take on anything in the world. You bounce me, I'll, I'm going to hit you the next ball or six. So that kind of an image is portrayed. And uh, uh, But when you look at cricket team, the Indian national team, it's a, it's a bit more complicated because we, are, we don't have 11 Virat Kohli's playing over there. Now, some things might work for Virat Kohli, but it needn't work for, uh, say, Ravi Chandran Ashwin. Because we are all, I mean, as individuals, hardwired differently. We all have, have our strengths, the weaknesses, and also how our how we look at the game in a in a in a in a cerebral way. So Ashwin is a thinking cricketer. They say uh, he is uh, he thinks uh, uh, of challenges in a highly technical way. How to beat the batsman in a with the spin with with his variations and all that. Well, Virat Kohli might be looking at it in a way how to play with his mind, how to get into his mind, how to be so aggressive that he... So, I'm, I'm speculating here, but but it's clearly portrayed. That's how that's how uh, the Indian skipper wants things. So, he has his own set of players who, he try, who is busy trying to mold in his image. But not everybody is, 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 is mentally set up for that. So... What happens here is there are a lot of players who, who look at things differently. They are under a, a bit of a mental strain because they have to maintain this, this persona. And, and uh, it's not as simple as that, as simple as keeping an uh, aggressive frame of mind and going all out and playing because in life when you look at it and let's translate, uh, transcend the playing field. So in the playing field, you have... 100 hours being played in a one day match for instance or 40 hours being played in a T20 match and you can probably hold up that persona uh, to perform at the most on the edge being aggressive about it but the moment you step out of the field it's a different ball game altogether because life is 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 not 100 hours life is not well defined in in the set of uh, time bound rules that sport gives so these players find themselves at sea. Many of them find themselves at sea because they, when real issues creep up, they can't, they can't cope with it because their mental strength or mental fortitude or physical attributes are primed to perform on the playing field, on the giving day, in, the, in a set parameters. And life doesn't give you that kind of set parameters. And now when you look at these uncertain times, the, I mean, it, I mean, the forget parameters, there's nothing for you to, yeah, have a yardstick for you to perform, I mean, or keep yourself sane. Right, right, right. So, uh, but uh, to also go into the issue in terms of uh, some of the challenges sports persons face and what exactly can be done in, term, in terms of addressing them. The first place, I think, uh, an open conversation about it is often missing in many circles. So, there's no real, there's very little talk about say, mental health challenges. I mean, there's a lot of talk about fitness. There's a lot of talk about uh, ups and downs in careers, but there's very little honest conversation about uh, mental health challenges in sports persons face. So, yeah, uh, recently, two cricketers, two former Indian cricketers came out, say that they had grappled with depression during at some point in their careers. 
and uh, they i mean one is pravin kumar uh, fast bowler and the other one is robin uttappa so pravin's case was uh, he was when he came out uh, around in jan or something like uh, yeah it was in january this year so he was saying and he lives in meera saying he had nobody to talk to uh, because nobody would understand what what i am talking about what i am feeling because he said that he was hearing voices he he, he couldn't understand what is happening with him he was always on the edge always angry always uh, always uh, in some sort of aggressive frame of mind and then one fine day he took his car out and he went into the highway near haridwar he just parked his car and he was going to use his gun on to himself he was going to shoot himself then suddenly he saw the picture of his kids and he decided not to not to take that extreme step came back he addressed this issue he spoke to uh, experts uh, and he could deal with it he could come out to such an extent that he can be open about it to the media and that is a big step for a sports person because when you open up about a uh, uh, a weakness that can be held against him in the next uh, team selection for for instance or even in a job for pravin kum pravin kumar's case he is more or less top playing so he could have a coaching career but who would want a mentally weak coach to lead lead a side so these are questions that that creep into into the players mind when they when they have to address uh, mental issues even address physical issues but uh, beyond that because since mental issues are a much more i mean less defined and very uh, subjective issue uh, they are they are scared to address it even if the team has experts or even if if, if an entity like the sports illustrate uh, sports uh, uh, authority of india has uh, psychologists in the panel to to address these they no player would be open about it unless they trust the system unless they uh, know for sure that it it won't be used against them and I, uh, like i said in my in the first uh, point that we addressed here sport uh, the mental fortitude that you need or mental strength that we spoke about on the sporting field is very different from uh, what these players face or what the players or what we need as individuals outside the playing field and while maintaining this persona of a infallible uh, sports person they just it's it's a it's a shallow crust and it can easily be broken once once real life situations catch up with them and uh, as far as now is concerned when when things are opening up and when uh, action has not started sporting action has not started training itself has not started at all and uh, cricket establishment or the sports authority of india or the indian olympic association they are talking about some certain sport getting into training certain athletes getting into training but still the point that they are addressing is more the physical side of it where they need to be sure that the players don't get infected they need to be sure that the players don't get uh, injured but they are not talking about in what mental state these players would be coming out after after a three month period of lockdown and uh, many of them being away from their families and their families in some cities where things are spiking and uh, so but for that so it's 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 a very complex issue and it needs addressing and uh, uh, the authorities are not doing it the right way in the sense uh, they should look at it in a much more holistic approach where uh, it's not just about uh, creating avenue for the player to open up but creating avenue in such a way that to to give give that confidence to the player that this is okay like i uh, uh, was mentioning uh, about grassroots and coaches getting equipped to deal with yeah, because uh, because i think two two issues like you pointed out is one is that uh, like you just mentioned there is a perception that any kind of conversation about this is a weakness and yeah. second second is the idea that uh, very wrong perception of course and the second is the idea that if i do this my career is gone for a toss like if if i if i talk as a player i can never be a coach if i talk as a coach no one so uh, in order to address both of these i would think that uh, and uh, from the very beginning it needs to be done i think which is what you were uh, reaching at uh, starting to talk about. yeah so at the grassroots level coaches focus on getting the basics right that's the that's the that's the cliche talk that we hear for, from any grassroots coach or any grassroots 
program. So if you are a footballer, they'll teach you how to kick and run with the ball and understand the game and understand passing and trapping and all these things. Uh, but uh, there should also be a, uh, I mean, the coach, the who I, I mean, and it's a very important role. So, for instance, when we talk about education of kids, we talk about kindergarten teachers or or primary teachers. But they, one of the papers that they learn as as uh, during their teacher training course is child psychology, and it, and the child psycholo- psychology that a kindergarten teacher uh, learns is different from the child psychology a beard teacher learns and I have, I have done my B.A. so I, have, I, have, I understand that difference TTC course and the B.A. course so this is education as well sport is education because uh, there is a lot of training involved and you are play, you are training young minds to become champions at one point or young minds to become healthy individuals in a, in a healthy society so, so sport is a social building activity and so you are, you want you want to focus not just on making a a great goal scorer out of a boy, whether he reaches the the higher leagues or whether he reaches the national team or whatever, notwithstanding, uh, you want to develop him with a healthy mind and a healthy body. So so the grassroots coaches should have some kind of training to address address the mind aspect of the game. To, so a simple thing like uh, when when uh, competition happens and I used to wrestle. So before I enter the bout, uh, I would feel tremendous pressure because it's an individual sport and you can it's a win or lose situation and you are to blame if you lose and you are to you are you are to blame if you win also. So so it it works both ways. And a simple thing from my coach saying that it's it's okay to be tensed. And uh, you can deal with it. The moment you enter the bout, you will be relaxed because once the bout starts, you will flow into it. So, but nobody says that. You realize that after the bout, saying that, yeah, after after it started, it was fine. But then the cycle continues, and it slowly builds on on you uh, that that pressure that there is no release valve, and you don't understand what is happening with you, and that 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 that. And this is a sporting scenario I'm talking about. While a larger picture is whether you are equipping the kid, boy or girl, to deal with pressure situations, real life pressure situations that will arise uh, later in life. So, so sport at the grassroots or sport training even at the IS level, it's not about performance as such, which is sadly what it has become, but it's also about a, uh, a building a healthy system that, that everyone can tap into and every, everyone can uh, aspire to reach a healthy state of mind and a healthy state of body. So that is that is the focus that should be there. And and to get that focus, you need to address the, the both, the, both the factors, the physicality of it as well as the mental side of it. And, and, and then when i mean see again life is not perfect and a lot of things can uh, come up and uh, mental state of being is different for different people and all that but at least the player when you, when this hits you you would be ready to be open about it and have conversations or address it by talking to experts and things like that so that is the culture that we need to develop thank you so much Desi, for talking to us thanks that's all we have in this episode of Let's Talk. We'll be back tomorrow with the latest news developments from the country. Until then, keep watching News Click.